Hey, I'm Dr. Brown, family practice, and I specialize in couples therapy. I have with me today, Bill Farmer. Welcome. Thank you. Good time, friend. Uh, so many, like you were saying tonight, we pick up where we left off. We, have, we haven't seen each other in quite some time, but no matter what ex like extent of time, we always pick up where we left off, and I love that. Love that. I do too, Doc. <laughs> I love when you call me Doc. <laughs> well, let's be real. The full name is Doc Hottie. Come on now. Ah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll accept that. Um, nice little, what do you call it? Nickname? Sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. So anyway, we're talking about some good stuff. Uh, relationship matters. And uh, you happen to be single, though. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. How, and tell me about that. Are you happy where you're at? I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think the, I think the thing that a lot of people forget about in life is that you don't need somebody else to be happy. And it's most important to try to be happy with yourself before you try to, you know, put all of your baggage onto somebody else. Absolutely. You know, the key thing I've always found in a relationship is it's, it's, it's good to find somebody to help you unpack that luggage, that emotional Samsonite that drags us all down. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I've had that for a few years with some other women in my life um but i have also dodged marriage like a bullet so there is that oh dodged marriage like a bullet yes hmm. definite aversion so what's behind that what do you think i think it's uh <laughs> wow you put me on the spot already huh <laughs> i'm not mad at you but um i think a lot of it for me is just uh it might be subconscious it might be um there's something that my brain has seen that it didn't communicate to my heart, but it was like, you need to sabotage this somehow so you can get out of it clean. You know, uh, there's also a lot of stubbornness um, on my end and on the end of uh, my, the long-term relationships I've had, you know, it takes two to tango. Absolutely. But I will always take responsibility for my part of, uh, of fucking up things. Um, so well, it sounds like you have like a, maybe an avoidant. Are you familiar with the terms avoidant or anxiety? Um, uh, what do you call it? Attachment theory? I'm familiar with the terms. I don't use them towards me. I know. Well, I mean, they're labels, right? And, right. and, and they, but they do help to kind of decipher through some things. So what I'm hearing you say is, though, you said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you sort of sabotage things when, you know, when you're. When I feel, it's almost like when I feel backed in a corner, mm -hmm. uh, when I when I feel like I don't have the freedom to remain me, you know, and I, I think it goes down to a base primal instinct of I'm in a corner now, I don't know what to do, and it's fight or flight, and you know. Yeah, so what makes you feel like you can't, would you say, can't be you, or yeah. when you're backed into a corner? So When you get expectations, so I, I've said to people a lot, um, especially in the last few years, that I've had some time of self-rumination. Uh, and, and being single from a five-year relationship, um, is that I married music at a young age. I was 15 years old. You know, that was always my heart and soul. And a lot of times uh, women aren't comfortable with you having a passport and a go bag and, you know, the possibility of you being gone for six months at a time, which I can understand completely. Right. But at the same time, that is something that, that drives me, that wakes me up every morning, something that I've always loved. Something that's always cherished. Right. And, and that's something you're not willing to give up and for good reason because it feeds your soul, right? Correct. Yeah. So finding somebody who's understanding of that is hard to find. That's a tall order. I get that because, you know, women look for security, stability. They want that. They need that primarily, I think. A place to nest. You know, yes, exactly. That's what we were, women were built for. I mean, you can argue with me if you want, but. I'm not going to at all. <laughs> not you, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and it goes to say like men, okay, we all have our, our things. So women, yeah, we need that security stability. So I understand. But, uh, so, but you got to stay true to who you are and like feed your soul. Cause I mean, what, I, that's the only way you can thrive in this planet and be, bring benefit to everybody, yourself and everybody, right. Is right. to feed your soul. So absolutely, yeah, that's a predicament. So then what do you, how do, what's your get around? Like, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I've spent 25 years in the music industry. I, as a guitar tech, a roadie, a guitar player, a musician. Um, so you're accepting of the fact that you you realize that 
most women are not going to be accepting of your your lifestyle. Which oh, not for a long time, just for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but doing all that, working with multiple multiple Grammy winners, everything like that, I've gotten to see all of that uh, amazing side of life in the music industry. Um, and I have slowed down, you know, now I'm a, I'm a banquet chef at a private country club. Um, yeah. I love the guys I work for, the guys I work with. Um, and so maybe those are a... guys I see, on a, you know, six days a week I'm with them. Right. You know, and I don't really have time for anything outside of it. Although my old roommate's mom told us a long time ago, because we were both having woman problems at the same time. And she said, you know, you got to remember somebody wants to spend time with you, they'll make time to spend with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And that's also a tall order. Yeah. Well, so maybe, I wonder if subconsciously you kind of hold out for that person, right? And and you should. I'm a hopeless you fucking romantic. I'm not going to lie about that. You like, know? so you want to you wanna find your person. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you realize it's uh, maybe not, you know, you, your pool of, of options is probably smaller than others would be if you didn't have the lifestyle that you want to I mean, make, I'm not, I, I'm the know. first one to admit, I am not the easiest to deal with. <laughs> None of us are. You right? know, as far as lifestyle goes. <laughs> we well, that's the thing. If, it, it's if it's I found somebody of... who was easy to deal with, we would be talking about my, my singleness, you know. You know? <laughs> I think it's not a matter of easiness versus not easiness. I think it's a matter of matching up. Well, finding somebody yeah. who wants to work with you to make it feel like it's easy, even though you're putting the work or in. Or seeing your what some might perceive as your your downfalls, your negatives, your drawbacks as your positives, right? Right. You're adventurous. You're spontaneous. God, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I so, that. and and I commend you for like staying true to who you are, because you know we often find ourselves well, women, I think, notorious are for compromising. Uh, probably too much, honestly, a lot of the times because we're pleasers, we're nurturers. And so we automatically, I feel like, shift the balance too much. And then we deprive of ourselves of the ability to enjoy what we love about ourselves, what we're innately built to do and enjoy doing. It feeds our soul because we're always tending to others and caring for others. So anyway, Which... sidebar. <laughs> uh, I can't help myself. Five kids. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How do you de- <laughs> now? No. How do you deal with that? I mean, having five kids, being a single mother, uh, that's got to be a strain on every corner of your life. How do yeah, you? No. How do you do it? If I stop to think about it, um, the world's just spinning around me. So I just kind of keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's you just do what you got to do. But yeah, I love my babies. Five of them. Oh my god. I know. Some days I I think, what the? How? How are you doing this? How did you do it? How did you get through? My- anyway. <laughs> Enough about me. <laughs> oh, God. oh, look, the good doctor doesn't want to talk about himself. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Bury your soul. Oh, <laughs> shit. So where do you what? Oh, I swore. But I think that's okay. <laughs> I fucking hope so. Where do you hope? Where do you want to be? Are you content with you where you are? You know, that it's funny. Somebody asked me, you know, that where do you want to where do you see yourself in five years? I have no idea. You know, well, I'm content where I'm know, at. I'm happy where I'm at. I mean, I'm in terms of. Are you fulfilled in, overall in life? Or, you know, I know this isn't probably, you don't have to go in deep, but in terms of relationships, like, I feel like maybe, what do you want? What's your, I just if want you to, could have anything in terms of a relationship, sorry. Just somebody who accepts me for who I am and that can deal with me and I can deal with them, you know, yeah. like our crazies match up mm-hmm. and it's cool in the gang. It's, right. And You I know, sh- and we just, it, I, want, I want a teammate. Cool in the gang. I love Cool in the gang, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a teammate. Yeah, somebody who is accepting of you and probably, I would assume, vice versa. Unconditional love. Yeah. So it sounds like you do want a partner because I should say that not everybody does, right? Some people are, well, I don't know. I always have to wonder, are you really, truly 100% okay on your own? Because people will swear, I- I'm good. I don't need anybody. There's been times at my job where there's too many people in the kitchen and I'm trying to work and I'm trying to get things done. In the kitchen. Uh-huh. I know. I didn't want to say that out loud. Should I? Well, I say that no. in my house all the time. You just went from Dr. Hottie to Dr. Punny. Um, but when, and when it gets to that point. I don't know what that means. That was, that was a pun. That was a oh, pun. punny. There okay, you okay, go. Okay, and, okay. and now we're. I got it. Um, and I've gotten frustrated and I've walked past my boss and I've grabbed an eight foot prep table the stuff i'm working on in a cart 
I said, I'm going downstairs into a locked room. I will be back when my job is done. I can't do it right now. And I go to, and I sequester myself. I don't even put music on, which kind of makes me sound like a psychopath. But, you know, it. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> Why? Because you don't put music on? Right. Yeah. And I'm just down there by myself in silence with no one around me in a locked room to get my job done. And I'm happier doing that. I don't know how that yeah. helps answer your No, it's like your, your meditation time, maybe. It kind of is. Yeah. It's, you know, there's 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 something so, to be said about being by yourself and getting what you need done. Yeah. Done. Okay. So there's, you're talking about like, you are a person that needs your alone time. Yeah. But you also do value having a companion or somebody there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Somebody you can lean on, somebody you can talk yeah. to, somebody you can bounce, bounce things off of. Right. You know, somebody that you know has your back. Which is hugely, hugely beneficial to us. Mind, body, soul. Like, all so beneficial. Like, the people that live the longest, you know, that's one of the things they say. They all have really deep uh, connections and relationships that they've maintained. A social network support. It's so huge. So huge. Anyway. Um. <laughs> I feel like you're shifting gears. Huh? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe a little transition. I don't know. Uh, we were talking about, oh, yeah, total segment into Alone Together. Somebody was mentioning this to me. Uh, you know, a friend of mine, matter of fact, she says she's happily remarried now. But, you know, we just like you and I, we had um, not been uh, in contact for some time. And then we ran into each other, picked up where we left off. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, remarried now. And she was just talking about her. A relationship prior to that, her marriage prior to the one she was in now, who she's very happy with. But she said that her ex-husband and her would be in the same room, but she felt like she wasn't there, like she was invisible to him, even though they were in the same room. In other words, like she didn't felt seen, heard, uh, valued, you know, like. And that's terrible. And it's sad. I've heard people say that as well. Yeah. You know, and it's it, you. it's almost like your roommates. You know, right. And that's sad because you're not doing anything to cultivate what you planted yeah. the fucking seeds yep. for in the first place. And that's just I don't know. I don't know why people would want to do that to themselves. Well, I don't understand. That. You know, it makes me wonder, like, what led to that? Because it's like it's almost like similar to if if you have kids or if you know what it's like working in a kitchen, you know, when the pressure is mounting, you know, when you're about to like boil over. Right. So what leads up to that? You you learn your buttons and you know what triggers you and you know you learn to recognize those things. So I feel like in a relationship, like before it gets to that point where you're not having sex anymore, you're just roommates, like home drum, like let's get through the daily routine. I mean, if we could step, if if you could take a, a few steps back and kind of prevent those things, whoa, like. If you could find identifying triggers or identifying things that come up, what would they be? I, I suppose for everybody, it would be different. Well, Financial stresses are big, um, like communication. Oh, hello, communication. Communication huge. is huge. Right. That's the, From it's day such one. A lost. I. And now, granted, I'm saying this as, as an older person, but I really feel like the advent of technology has older, done so much. Has, <laughs> has done so much to really just put a, a, a cog in the wheel of human dissonance and communicating properly where you, before you had to call somebody and hear their voice and talk to them on the phone and, you know, you hear someone's voice and that's, that's a unique instrument. Oh Everybody God. has their own voice, you know, and you hear that instrument. And when you first saw that person and you locked eyes across the room and then you felt, you know, something there yeah. and then you talked, that was the first time you heard their instrument, right? Right. They heard yours. It isn't. Oh, my God. And so something there harmonized and turned into something. I love this. That, yeah. you know, you wanted to put a ring on and that you wanted to stay with all the time because you loved that song so fucking much that you yeah. never wanted to stop hearing it. And then you got sick of it because you didn't change the tempo. You didn't change the melody. <laughs> you didn't change the lyrics to the song. And now here you are on a Saturday night at 8 o'clock in the evening and you have headphones on listening to a fucking audio book while your husband watches a college football team of a school he didn't graduate from. And you sit there and wonder, How do we where did it all go wrong? <laughs> what happened to the, you know... 
panties hanging from the lamp. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. You know, what happened to clearing off the coffee table and getting it on? You know, what what happened to let's, let's both do a doggy style so we can watch the hockey game. Seriously, what though. What happened to that? Yeah. Where did that, where did the magic go? Where did like, it all? stay young, like forever when, young. How did you like, stop caring? And it's also, you know, you mentioned financial stresses, but it's all, this, I, I feel like it's all stresses. Like, yeah. you have to be able to deal with stress as a unit. So that way one person doesn't feel it as much as the other one. Cause when the other one starts to suffer, Man, that means your team is suffering. Such wisdom coming from somebody who's never been married, right? Correct. Oh my God. How do you know this? And Almost like, twice. How seriously. do I know this? How I, do you know this in married couples? Like the, the rate of divorce, I don't even want to say it. You probably could guess, wager it. <laughs> I don't bet doc. Yeah, no, it's like, Upwards of 50, I've been betting on my I've been betting on my of- liver for a long time. I don't. That's the only thing I bet on. Her. <laughs> oh shit! Well, that's another episode um, <laughs> where we delve into the farmer's liver issues. No, I'm kidding. Wow! Wow! <laughs> kidding! 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 Very judgy. Oh, you said it, not me. <laughs> I, fair enough. You just made. I'm it just worse. doing my job. I'm a doctor. I, yeah, you know, I'll, after all, bring medical. Yeah, I know you are. That's, <laughs> see, that's that's what sucks when you say that I can't argue it. You know. Yep, facts. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Those pesky facts. But I do appreciate that. Like, you nailed it. It's teamwork. Like, if you're not, you got to commit. Like, if you're going to do the married thing, honestly, you got, what happened to commitment? What happened to, like, promising something and, and staying true to what you promised? You promised to be there from death to, you know, in sickness and in health, from, yeah, whatever. You know, the the everybody has their own, like, derivation of their vows, but it's something yeah, like that. You know what that. it is? You know what it is? I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. Here. We're not getting Shoot. too deep on Go you, though, because I know you're it. not up for this. Listen, I have two behind, you know. <laughs> behind my belt. <laughs> so, not like that's a proud thing or anything, but. You, know, you have experience. It There's is. Nothing wrong is. with that. That's right. Um, you remember when you were a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Say you're about 10, 11 years old. Okay. And you remember going to a, a car lot with your parents. I do. Yes. All right. And so you remember you're getting the new family sedan or oh my God. whatever you're picking up. Right? Uh, how did you know? And so I had no, this is not, not this was not, oh, not show prep at all, but <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm just asking a you station questions. Station wagon, yo. Station wagon. A five kids. Yeah, the family truck. from a family of five right? kids. They have the wood paneling on it? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, let me guess, it was burgundy? <laughs> no, it was silver. Okay, so ours is burgundy. Okay. But do you remember the process of doing that? Do you remember driving around? As a family, yeah. you know, and sometimes you have to go on the later nights, depending on when dad got out of work. Yes. But yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Th- there was effort done. You had to look at Definitely. newspapers and figure out, you know, what was on sale, what was going where, who was doing what, what was special. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you remember how long that deliberation process took until it finally got to, you got the new keys for that silver family truckster and you drove off the lot and everybody's so happy because you got this yeah. new car and you know, things are good, right? Yeah. But do you remember how long that process took? God, it seemed like forever. Now you can go on your cell phone, <laughs> all right, download an app, and in the next day or two, some dude shows up with a car, a, a, a truck with the car on the bed of it, and drops it off at your house. It's already been signed, sealed, delivered. It's yours. and they dra- Everything is instant gratification am... now. It doesn't take work to get what you desire. Yes. Nailed it again. Tinder, swipe left, swipe. Yeah. Tinder's an awful thing. Oh, my God. What's, Tinder. What did I even say? I like how Bumble tries to make, make themselves feel like they're mm. better because, oh, the woman has to message first. It's okay. Like, on a future episode, we will dissect the dating online, the app industry and <laughs> dating online. Well, I, I can't say anything for it yourself, might be segments, but I, don't know. I am wet with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> no, there's definitely something to be said for true, authentic chemistry, in-person connection, that cosmic energy. And the work. How do you get that through the, through an app? I mean, not to knock apps. I mean, they, they serve a place. I, I truly believe that you. They are um, beneficial in many ways that we can't, you know, we can't filter through somebody like we can in an app. We can filter through, I don't even know how many people in an app, like, instantaneously yeah. whereas you know you randomly go out in your local area and try to hopefully meet somebody at a bar please right you're perfect somebody i mean it happens don't get me wrong it does but is it likely to happen 
Probably not. My thing with I am an attractive man. I'm, I'm the first. I'm the first one to say it. Um, but I'm a lot better conversationally than I am filling out a, oh a paragraph on a dating app or dating website. Listen, AI. Uh, chat GPT is my new best friend because you know sometimes I just don't know how how to articulate myself. Uh, whatever, uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are or how great you are at some things, but it, just putting, taking what you know to be yourself and putting it into somebody else to see it the same way as you is so hard to do. That's why you need outsiders, like take a snap, you know, or take a step back from yourself to put. That's that's hard for me to do. So chat GPT is my friend and AI. <laughs> Although I'm not on dating apps, but I have, you know, I've learned about them. I've educated myself because it's part of my. I mean, who won swipe right on you? <laughs> Come on now, Doc Hottie. Well, okay, but see, then they just judge me based by my appearance, and that's part of me, but it's not who I am. It's not how, yeah, it isn't who I am. It's not how I want to be. A woman is only as beautiful as she is on the inside. Because I have met some very strikingly physically beautiful women, but that is one ugly bitch underneath. Um, I think I can understand where you're coming from on that. I figured you would. Yeah. Two divorces. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so hopeless romantic Phil Farmer. I am in the house. <laughs> I am. No, I am. I, you know, I love love. Love's great. You know. Wow. I I'm just shocked at how much you know about. Like it, I've been married twice, and I thought I knew something, but how did you just sum it up for me? For everyone, like so quickly, right there, nailed it. It, I listen, work balance. I listen to people when they talk, and I, I have a lot of friends who are divorced. I have a lot of friends who have successful marriages that have told me why they were, you know. And being not only a musician but a writer, I tend to observe. So I observe things when I talk to people, or yeah. even when I see people I don't even know. You know, just kind of look over and. You see the happiness on their faces, stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. and you can gain something from it. You can sense something from it. It's like, okay, that's legit. That's real. So you then, know, that's not forced. They're not trying. Then you see the other couples that are sitting there and they're both on their phone and they haven't talked in three drinks, and you know, it's just so, depressing. So you you have an ability to observe and detect information, see patterns, and recognize things with other people. With yourself, you you've said that you. You would like a relationship, but you haven't found the person that kind of matches your, you know, like vibes with you is complimentary that you can get along long term with. But so where have you looked and are you really looking or are you just kind of thinking, let's just roll with it? That's funny you say that. Like my younger buddies, you know, that I go out with from work, you know, these girls will come up to me in the bar that I know that I've met. Like, oh, my gosh, I've been to see everything. And they're like, who is that? Like, oh, that's so. Oh, I mean, okay. like, that's so and so. You know, I know her from here. Really sweet girl. You know, why aren't you talking to her, old man? I'm like, well, the Tigers game is on right now. I don't feel like missing it. Uh, again, I with just, avoidant, avoidant. Yeah, it's kind of avoidance, Maybe. but also I. But it's okay. I mean, I, I've had my fair share of bedmates, miss. And <laughs> hey, listen, that's not my primary goal at this juncture in my life. No, hey, it's not a bad thing. I get it 100. percent In fact, I have a a little bit of a confession. I'm an avoidant too. Mm. I don't want to Shocking that we've been close for mm. years. And, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you live and learn, right? You know, I think for me, the trauma, like a lot of times it's in childhood. And I, I think probably there is some underlying childhood trauma that, and not to say, my parents are amazing, by the way, always. But we, we for whatever reasons, uh, um, as children pick up on these little snapshots of life and it makes an impres- impression on our brain. And then, you know, it can lead to things in the, in the adult, we can manifest them in our adult relationships. And so definitely that's part of what has happened with me. But then also two divorces. And that, God, that's such painful stuff to go through. So I think that has reinforced the avoidant in me. <laughs> I don't think it's reinforced being an avoidant. I think it has made you steal yourself. You've put up a wall that you... There's no, there's not even a gate on that wall that you can give somebody the code to. You haven't even carved that yet because you're not fully healed from it. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. And that's, Very true. 
you know that that's where it is for you and there's so nothing is this wrong doctor with doctor show i mean are you the doctor <laughs> give me the stethoscope <laughs> no and there, it's it's not a avoidance thing it's Doc protection Hottie, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's no it's protection and healing and healing absolutely you know? and she just took the stethoscope off. <laughs> but should no I, it's should I lay on the couch now <laughs> <laughs> somebody call joe get the couch in here um <laughs> No, it's, it's, we do things to protect ourselves that we don't realize that we're doing until we actually talk about it. We make it out loud. We put it out into the ether and then we figure out like, oh, I'm looking out for myself for once in my yeah, life. Cause yeah. we, you know, we, you're a very empathetic person. Mm-hmm. I'm a very empathetic person. We spend yeah. so much time helping other people and shielding other people that when we have to do it, we go the fuck away from that. Yeah. And we do that in silence alone and until we're healed again to feel like we can go out there and face the world again yeah and keep doing it all over and over i think uh i was really broken by a recent incident um during uh, like very very shortly after i had filed for divorce uh, just a few years ago my ex-husband now ex-husband um well and he was my ex-husband at the time Decided to call the Board of Medicine and uh, throw a little wrench in things for me in my career. So one thing led to another in lack of financial funding. Um, I've not been able to fight it to it, the extent needed to re- restore my reputation, but he has smashed my reputation, led to problems with my license, being at Jeopardy, and uh, all... <sighs> he can only explain it, but uh, crushed me. And, um, yeah, so I can't, I can't even fathom letting someone in, you know, that wall is up hard steel. Yeah. As it should be. For Fort fucking reason. Knox. I get yep. it. So, and that's understandable. And that's where we're at with <laughs> relationships, uh, you know, and then you gotta, you have to eventually, I understand that I have to move on from that and, um, grow from that, learn from it. And so, you know, I started out with being far too naive and ignorant and just trusting and vulnerable. So there were certain, I had to go through that to teach me how to protect myself always. Like you always, everybody needs to know that we all have a dark side and everybody has a dark side and you have to watch out because you never know. And I mean, you got to let the wall down when you know that you're ready for that. Um, but at least I'm self-aware and I know that's not where I'm at right now, but, um, I'll get there, you know, because what is life without love? So if you can't, if you can't let it in, then you're, you know, it's not going to be as fulfilling. It's not going to be, it's not what we're here for. No. So. And you're not, you're, you are such a strong doc hottie. You're seriously a badass time. chick. And I don't think you're real. Day at a time. <laughs> and it, all it is is one day at a time. Every day, one day at a time. Yeah. Everything in life, one day at a time. You know, and that's the only way we can we, we can go. That's it. One day at a time. Some days are better than others. And I think that's a good place to close. Bill Farmer, thanks for coming on my show. Doc Hottie, thanks for having me. After hours. <laughs>